Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I would like to see this as actually a very new take on Japan. Not because we are a challenger anymore, or we are seeing through the lens of what we in academia might call orientalist, very much a sort of treating Japan as a very unique case, an exception, and so on and so forth, but a sort of a beginning of Japan entering an era where it is judged on its own standards by its own sort of, in, in a way, uh, successes and not being measured by the success of the West or in this case, these days, perhaps in terms of comparing them to China or Korea. That I think that Japan, for the first time perhaps in modern history, has something very unique to offer, where the Japanese can be also objective about where they are in the world and not sort of sensationalize or feel inferiority complex and so on and so forth. And um, this, I think, is, is one of the reasons why I think at least this project was made possible, for example, especially by uh, Dr. Philip Sugai of Doshisha Business School. So I'll now introduce uh, Dr. Joseph Haldane from the International Academic Forum. Thank you, uh, Professor Sato, and um, welcome to uh, this Global Innovation and Value Summit, GIVES, um, which is our first GIVES. Hopefully, um, this will go on um, to get bigger and stronger. I'd like to uh, welcome, please, <coughs> the first moderator for the opening panel, um, who will be uh, our guide, and that is uh, uh, Dan Sloan of the Nissan Media Center. And I'm very honored to kick this off with the three first uh, panelists this morning. Well, Dr. Sachio Semoto, chairman of Renova. He founded four telecom companies. When we dream big and aim high, we achieve more. When I founded KDDI, I gave a speech in front of only five employees that we, we will make a $10 billion company in 10 years. I don't know how many believed at that time, but it is now a company with a market cap of $70 billion. Uh, also joining on the panel this morning is Motoko Imada. She is CEO and founder of Infobon. Uh, I usually say to my staff that if you stop, you'll die. The organization has to be very flexible to uh, transformative and innovative. It shouldn't be rigid. Our third panelist this morning is, is Mr. Oki Matsumoto, who is managing director and chairman of Monex Group. Uh, people tend to think that the Japan is not so inno innovative uh, country. You know, uh, people talk about the, the lost economy and uh, you know many things. Uh, people talk about uh, you know Japan's been stagnant and those kind of things. But I actually believe that uh, Japan has been very uh, innovative. Uh, innovation is not uh, uh, invention. I, I actually, you know, uh, in the past, people talk about that the Japanese large corporations are not so uh, welcoming startups. But these days, uh, this relationship really changed. And I think there's a very good uh, cooperation, cooperative relationship between large corps and uh, uh, startups in Japan. So I will now hand the mic over to Ms. Koide, who will be the moderator. Thank you very much. So as she uh, explained, uh, our panel is about the traditional Japanese heritage business and how innovation works in that industry. So that's why uh, we are going to use mainly Japanese language for our discussion. So first, I'd like to introduce Hosoo Masao, Zenju Kawakami, and the real name is Takafumi. Kawakami Takafumi, you, you, he used two names. And the third partner, Rumiko Obata, so he has a sake brewery. 
Lasman, Shuji Nakagawa, second half, the afternoon session of the GIVES uh, conference today. My name is Ross Robery. I run a company called Edelman here and I have the honour of leading the next session. Maybe the most surprising session of all those today because I'm sure you will learn a lot of very valuable information about how Japanese large companies are in fact extremely innovative. I have to introduce a man who needs no introduction. But I am honored to be able to introduce to you uh, Mr. Yuzaburo Mogi, the honorary CEO and chairman of the board of Kikkoman. So without further ado, Mogi-san, thank, thank you very much. We sensed that the Americans in the United States had a potential want for Kikoman soy sauce. So we aimed to turn that want into effective demand. I'd like to close by repeating my main point. Innovation is the key to creating demand. People who manage businesses need to put all their effort into innovation in order to create demand. This is my clear understanding from my career in business. Thank you very much. I'd like to now move to the panel discussion um, on innovation from the multinational view, or as it is otherwise known, uh, as the large companies um, panel. So my panel today, um, we have, uh, first of all, Jean Montesano, who is director or senior managing director of, um, and chief public affairs officer at Lixel. Um, Masafumi Ishibashi is a senior managing executive officer at Nestle in Japan. Uh, Ishibashi-san and I have also known each other for quite a long time. Um, and he is one of my favorite people. Because every time I think of him, I think of chocolate and coffee. Mandalay Kalisi is Global Head of Automated Driving Mobility and Innovation at Toyota um, Motor Corporation. And Ludovico Seferi is President and Representative Director of Advanet, um, a company based in Okayama um, in Japan. Right now, so we looked a bit at traditional companies, we looked at big corporations, and what we're going to do right now, actually, we're going to look at startups. So we have here Kei Shimada, actually right now working for IBM. He's the director of innovation for IBM Innovation Incubation Labs. Then um, we have Tamaki Sano. She's also working for, for a big corporation right now. It's for Kirin, but in there, actually, she's in charge of business creation of innovation. And then we have the startup, a foreigner in a Japanese startup. So that's David Amuse. So he's uh, the CEO of Trillium Secure, so a car security company. Very interesting field. We have a lot of car discussion today. Had that before too. And last but not least, it's David Milston, who's actually a partner, head of Japan for Eight Road Ventures. So this is the venture capital side of things. So I think let's start with Kay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. When I was doing a startup, the, uh, the biggest problem that I had was um, clients. How do you get clients? You're making something, you're producing a product or a solution, and you just don't have that time to get out there and do your sales. So you need a bigger brother. Is what's really made me successful in my career is turning people who would naturally be competitors, naturally be antagonists, 
and finding a path for those people to work together. Look what's happening today. Whoever imagined Renault and Nissan and Mitsubishi Motors being a team? Are you kidding me? And, and one of the questions that always comes up is, you know, what's the path to be a venture capitalist? And, and um, for me, it's uh, the unique ability to, to fail multiple times. Uh, it's, it's the um, ability to hire people who are much better and much smarter than you. I wanted a sophisticated, sophisticated alcohol which has fresh aroma and with fruit juice, very high quality, and I named this Hyoketsu. I want to know how many person in this room has ever tried this Hyoketsu. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. It's my distinct pleasure now then to introduce <laughs> member of the diet. Thank you. We'll uh, have to have multi stage life. Education, maybe at the beginning, but after that, exploring, transition, company employment, independent working, and everything like that in, goes back and forth. So the education should be not for only children, but all for adults. That's the basic and you know, <laughs> thinking when we thought about the education for the next generation. So we thought that the three skills will be very important. Uh, one skill is the basic uh, calculation leading skill. And second skill uh, would be the uh, uh, communicative, communication skill to work as a team and sometimes leadership to lead a team. So, and then the third, is curiosity and the sense that feel the beauty of the nature and the beauty of the arts and beauty of the music. So those three skills are more important than memorizing all those things in the dictionary, things in the textbook. So those are the things that uh, uh, try to, we try to do uh, for our next uh, generation education. like to sort of give you the pro much broader view of the education and things and uh, much more from the other demographics view and say that the, the education system as we know today is very much outdated. It's not keeping up with time. So lifelong learning is a must. We really have to figure out how to do it. World uh, data. But projected use of training uh, providers according to the companies the educational institutions are sort of down at the bottom. They are not considered to be the, the place where they can get the retraining. So that the picture shows three silos, three silos. One is academia, one is industry, one is government. And inside in each silo, lot of small more silos. That's a problem. It's been a long time, doctor. And he has asked me if I could help sum up a little bit of what we heard today, all day. And so I've got my notebook full of notes. There it is. You want to see it? Um, we'll see how this goes. This is always a bit of a, ris bit of risky business to see what we can do, but we're going to try to see if we can bring some things together. One uh, thing that we see of the traditional uh, industries um, is a lot of care taken. So that change is happening, but it's done over time. So there are many kinds of technology, innovation. Just we have to continue to do the innovation. Otherwise, we cannot continue for next 300 years. I'm working with, with startups from Japan, startups from the US and from, from Europe. And um, in the US it's always, so what's your exit strategy? You know, being bought by Google, going IPO, and then do something else. 
In Japan, they look at what do you mean with an exit strategy? I'm here to build the company. Talking to your point, I think uh, what is missing right now is uh, confidence, and uh, you know, I, I believe you know each individual has a um, great creativity and uh, source of innovation. But uh, when we get together, uh, the tendency is you know just looking at each other, and uh, we don't make big decision, and uh, I think that's because uh, we don't have enough confidence to ourselves. <laughs>